In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build CCNA and CCMP topologies for free using Cisco DevNet. Cisco DevNet have made a whole bunch of labs available for study, and you can leverage Cisco Viral in Cisco DevNet for building your own CCNA and CCMP topologies for practice and study. So if you're studying for your CCNA exam or for your CCMP exam, or even for CCIE, you can build your own topologies on Cisco DevNet, in other words, on hosted solutions in the cloud using your web browser and a VPN connection. This is once again a free solution that Cisco have made available for study. Cisco DevNet is focused on empowering the networking community to learn about development, but you don't have to use their labs for development purposes. If, however, you want to study for Python or Ansible or other emerging technologies, DevNet have a lot of fantastic labs that you can use. But in this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a CCNA topology. In this case, CCNA security. I'm going to show you how you can build a topology with Cisco ASAs and Cisco routers and run that within Cisco DevNet. So fantastic solution available to all of us. Now this is the main DevNet website. It's available at developer.cisco.com. But the labs that I'm gonna show you are available using these links. The first one is a six viral license topology. In other words, you can only run six devices in this network, but with the larger topology, you can run more devices in your topology. So use one of these links. I've added the links below this video, or if you're watching on a different platform, it's available as part of the attachments. So have a look at the attachments or exhibits to access these labs. So in this example, I'm gonna go to the big topology. I'm gonna log in with my Cisco ID. If you don't have a Cisco ID, simply create one. So just create your own account and then you'll be able to log in. I'm gonna log in with my username and click next. I have to put my password in. And notice now a DevNet sandbox lab is displayed. So we have a viral server that we're gonna access remotely from our local PC. You need to download additional software to do this. In other words, you need to download VPN software to access the lab. If you don't have the software, click on the VPN access tab and then click download the Cisco AnyConnect VPN client software. In my example, I'm using a Mac, so I'll download that software. You can download the executable for Windows as well and follow the instructions for installation. If you're not sure how to install the software, Cisco have given us an installation guide that you can follow. So basically, you're gonna download the software double click on the executable or MSI file, and then follow the prompts by basically clicking next, 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 and installing the software. So the software is downloaded to my Mac. I'm basically gonna double click on the package file, and then I'm gonna follow the prompts to install the software. Notice here, please, you don't have to install all this additional software. So whether you're using a Windows machine or a Mac, I would probably only install the VPN software unless you really want this additional software. Click continue, click install. I have to put my Mac password in to install the software and the software is now installed. Okay, so the Cisco VPN software is now installed. Now before I can use this lab, I need to reserve it. So click on reserve, and then select how long you want to reserve the lab for. Notice it requires about 15 minutes to set up. So you can click on this pen if you wanna change the amount of time that you want access to the lab for. You could specify days, you could specify a week, you can specify minutes. So as an example, you could say I wanna have access to the lab for one day and 12 hours. Now just note, the longer you reserve the lab, 
the more likely that it's not gonna be available. So look at when it's available. It's nice to have access to a lab for a long time, but other people may be doing the same. In other words, also reserving the lab. So you may have to wait for the lab to become available at a later date. So I'm gonna reserve the lab. The lab is being reserved. And notice I'm told that there is a conflict with one or more of the resources. So in other words, it's not available. So this is the problem. So I'm gonna cancel that and I'm gonna try and reserve it for say two hours and click reserve. So in this case, I'm using the big topology. I'm gonna to click on load more slots to see when the lab is available. Now it's only available at these time slots and that's over an hour away from when I wanna use the lab. I wanna use it now because I wanna demonstrate this lab. So because the large topology is not available, I'm gonna try and use the smaller DevNet topology. So I'll cancel this one. This is the large topology. I'm gonna to look at trying to reserve the smaller topology. So I'm gonna click reserve. And let's see if I can reserve this topology. So the nice thing here is that there are two DevNet labs that you could use. One is a larger topology, one is a smaller topology. Now notice this one is already active. So I've been able to reserve the small topology straight away. Setup is estimated to end in 19 minutes. So I'll have to wait for that reservation to become active. You receive an email when the lab is available. So you'll need to check your email. But if you look on output, you can see what's happening. You can see as an example that setup has begun. I'll be able to see the activity to see what's happening if I wanna watch it actually be set up. Okay, so I've received this message saying, we are preparing your Cisco DevNet Sandbox Lab. We told that this lab, the Nexus OS with Nexus 9000, the lab is being set up, but it's gonna take about 20 minutes to set up the lab. And in the meantime, we told that we can download the AnyConnect VPN client software and there's documentation showing you how to install the software. So unfortunately, as we told here, please be patient. We have to wait for the lab to be set up. So at this point, you simply need to wait for your next email or wait for this to update and let you know when the lab is available. I still have about 12 hours left in this lab. So waiting a few minutes isn't a major concern and I can access the lab for over 11 and a half hours. While we're waiting for that, notice on the left-hand side, we told a bit about the lab. So there's information about the lab. I'm basically gonna ignore most of this. The only piece that's important is this and the VM Maestro Windows credentials. This is the information I need to log into Windows or to log into the viral server. I'm essentially gonna use my web browser from my local Mac to connect directly to the viral server and then set up a topology through viral. I'm basically gonna ignore all the other information because I'm not using this lab for Nexus 9000V. I'm gonna use this lab for CCNA studies. Now what I have done is reserve this large topology in preparation for this video. So notice in this example, I'm logged in as David Bombal, but the account that I've been using to demonstrate reserving a lab is David Bombal one So in this example, I've got the Nexus 9000 lab. I'm logged in as David Bombal. That's running in Chrome. And in this case, I've got Safari, and I've logged into DevNet as David Bombal. This lab is currently active and is active for six days and 14 hours. So what I'll do is demonstrate how to build the viral topology using this large topology because it has a lot more devices. You can support many more devices using this topology. Now what DevNet will do is send you an email telling you that your sandbox is ready. 
So as you can see here, it says, hi, David Bombal, your lab is ready. You can connect to it. You need to connect to the AnyConnect VPN using this address and this username and password. So what I'm gonna do is run the Cisco AnyConnect client. And here it is. The VPN address that I wanna to connect to is the one in my email. So I'm gonna click connect. So this is my username. And here's my password. Click OK. OK, so the connection has now been made. I'm now connected to Cisco DevNet. And what that allows me to do is connect to the viral server. Notice the IP address of the viral server. So I'm simply gonna navigate to the viral server. Going back to my DevNet information, notice we told this is the viral server information. So the credentials that I'm gonna use are guest, guest. So I'm gonna log in as guest, password is guest, and click login. So once again, I made sure that my AnyConnect client had successfully connected to Cisco DevNet. And then I got the credentials for the lab in this leftmost tab. So other information such as the VPN access information is shown on this tab, but I'm gonna to go to the first tab, scroll down, I can see the viral server information. Username is guest guest. So all you need to do is browse to the viral server and then log in as guest guest. And that's what I've done here. Now notice there are multiple users in viral. We have guest and we have UWM admin. The username that we're gonna use is guest. Now to set up a simulation, go to my simulations and click launch new simulation. These are the current simulations, but we don't wanna use those. I wanna create my own simulation. So I'm gonna click launch new simulation. You can add a local viral file to Cisco DevNet. So if you've got your own viral file, then upload it and use the topology that you've created previously. I'm not gonna do that here. What I'm gonna do is click editor to build a new topology. So essentially here I'm creating a brand new topology. Now notice we have ASAs, so we can add ASAs to the topology. ASAs are firewalls. If you're new to Cisco, don't worry about the ASAs. Notice here that you can add Cisco routers. So iOS V are Cisco routers. You could also add a switch to the topology. So we've got iOS V layer two switches that we could add to the topology. I'll just add one to show you that you can add devices to the topology. To add a link, click add link, and now you can connect the devices together. Notice you can select specific interfaces. I'm gonna select gigabit 00, and then I'm gonna select the second ASA connected to gigabit 00 as well, and then click set target. So essentially those two are connected to each other. Select the router, select this interface, select the ASA, select this interface, and click set target. Second ASA, second interface, set source. Click on the router, set the destination as gigabit 01. And then what I can do on the router now is select gigabit 02, set that as the source. Select the switch, gigabit 01, and set the target. So I've built a little topology here consisting of two routers, a switch, and two ASAs. I'm gonna click finish and return. So I'm gonna click sync to sync this to UWM. You can see it's synced, so I'm gonna go back to the previous window. And notice we see this, using a viral from 
Topology Editor. I'm going to click Launch to launch the topology. Have to give it a name actually, so let's call this ASA V CCNA and click Launch. Wow. Now, because I'm receiving that error, what I'm going to do now is download the topology and download it to my local computer and then re upload it. Going back to the first tab, I'm going to shut down this first topology because of the license issues. So I've stopped the first topology. And then what I'm going to do is click Launch New Simulation. And I'm going to select a local viral file and select the file that I've just downloaded and then click Launch. I find it better to download the viral file and then upload it. Because otherwise, if you keep the editor here and you by mistake close this tab, you lose your lab. So it's a lot easier, I think, to create the lab in the editor then download the topology so you've got a backup of your topology and then upload it. Notice now the topology has been launched. So here are our devices. They are still starting up, but notice this ASA is now active. And what I can do now is click Live Visualization to view the topology. I'm gonna log in as guest and guest. And notice here's my topology. So what I can do is access devices that are active. So all my devices are now active. So what I could do as an example is click on iOS V2 and click Telnet to Serial 0 to access the console port. So notice please, even though this says Telnet to Serial 0, that's actually the console port. I'm gonna type no to bypass the system configuration dialog. So that should give me a blank router. I could do the same with this ASA. So Telnet to serial zero. Notice I'm on the ASA, password is blank. So this is a Cisco ASA. So I've now been able to log in to that ASA. And I can see details about the version of software running on the ASA. Do something similar with the second ASA, Telnet to Serial 0. Here's ASA 2. So what I should do probably is name the devices. So here's the first router. I'm gonna call this router one. Here's the first ASA. So call this host ASA one. So host name ASA one. Do something similar on the second ASA. So host name ASA two. And then on the second router, I can telnet to the serial port. Something very similar will happen here. I'll need to bypass the initial configuration dialog, and then I can set the router name. But while I'm here, I'll connect to the switch. And notice here's the switch in our topology. So show version shows us that we're using iOS V layer two on the switch. So I could give the switch a host name of switch one as an example. And then if I go back to router two, I could call this router two. So that's how you access Cisco DevNet and access a topology that consists of Cisco ASAs, routers and switches. Now you don't have to use ASAs. This is just showing you a topology that includes Cisco ASAs and other devices such as routers and switches. Now going back to the editor, notice I could add ASAs, I can add routers, different types of routers, IOL routers, CSR 1000Vs, iOS XRVs, Nexus routers, 
different types of routers can be added. You can add an unmanaged switch. Many types of devices can be added to the topology. So it's really up to you how you wanna build your topologies. But here's an example with ASA's routers and switches. What I'm gonna do now is take a configuration and paste it onto the devices to show you a working topology. So I've got a configuration here for ASA1, here's ASA2, here's router1, and here's router2. On ASA1, outside interface is gigabit 00. I'm gonna name the interface outside, set the security level to zero. Here's the IP address, I'm gonna enable the interface. Now, if you're not sure about these commands, don't worry. This is not CCNA routing and switching information. This is CCNA security. So if you don't know how to set up an ASA, don't worry. You could build a topology here with just routers and switches. This is the inside interface, inside IP address. Here's a route pointing to the second ASA. I've got objects here to allow for dynamic NAT, and I've got a policy map to allow ICMP through the ASA. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna to connect to the first ASA and I'm gonna paste the configuration into the ASA. So I need to scroll down. Looks like some of the config went missing. So let's do that again. I'll just paste parts of the configuration to make sure that it pastes properly. So there's the first interface. Here's the second interface. Here is the static route and the NAT object. That looks good. Here's the policy map. That's been added and I'll type end. So my first ASA is configured. I'll take the configuration from the second ASA and I'll try this again. I'll make this window a bit bigger. Paste the configuration in. That looks better. Type end. Configuration has been pasted in. So my two, a so my two ASAs are configured. Let's look at router one. So router one, copy this configuration. I'll make this window a bit bigger. Configuration has been pasted in. Now this command is not required because I'm already in global configuration mode, but I won't worry about that, that's fine. At this point, here's the configuration for router two. I'll copy that. So here's router two. Somehow I named it wrong, so let's name that right. And I'll paste the configuration in. Actually had the host name in the config there, so I didn't have to do that, but that's okay. So going back to our topology, this router has this IP address configured. The ASA here has this IP address configured on the inside interface. So let's see if the router can ping the local ASA. So can router one ping itself? Yes, it can. Can it ping the ASA? Okay, so I'm having problems. Let me make sure that I pasted the config into the right devices. So what I'm gonna do is close my windows down so all I'm doing is closing the windows to the devices. And then what I'm gonna do is click on the devices and make sure that I'm configuring the right device. Okay, so I made a mistake when I copied the devices in. So actually that's iOS V router one. I got to the devices swapped around, so that sh should be router one now. And then over here, this is router two. So I'll connect to the serial interface. 
So that's actually router two. I could move them around, I suppose, in the topology, but it's quicker just to paste a new configuration into the routers. So going back to iOS v2, which is router one, ping 10111, it's local IP address. Does that work? Yes, it does. Can we ping the ASA? Yes, we can. So this router can ping the ASA. Can it ping ASA2? Yes, it can. So that ping is going from this router to this ASA. Let's look at iOS v1, which is router two. IP address here, show IP interface brief, is 10121. Just make this bigger. So ping 10.1.2.1, that works. Ping 10.1.2.254, that's the local ASA, ASA2. Ping ASA1, that works. So I've got a working topology here. Now I haven't configured the switch in this topology. I'm not gonna do that. I just wanted to show you how to build a lab using Cisco DevNet. So again, you can build CCNA labs, you can build CCMP labs, you could even build CCIE labs using Cisco Viral in DevNet. DevNet gives us a whole bunch of resources that we can use for free. So again, there's no cost to use these resources, there's no cost to use these labs. You can simply reserve the labs and then create your own topologies. Now I think the major downside here is that the labs may not be available when you want them. So you have to plan and try to reserve the labs ahead of time. So if you know that you wanna do labs this weekend, you'd need to reserve uh, some time on Cisco DevNet. There's no guarantee that the labs will be available, but it's a fantastic resource that you can leverage for free. Now, if you're watching this video on YouTube, I would appreciate it if you like the video, and I would also appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're not watching this on YouTube, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash David Bumble. With that said, I wanna wish you all the very best. I hope that you find these labs useful.